Pastor Lee, good morning. Pastor Troy, hello. Uh, I, I just still have this nagging doubt that we're not actually live. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to check that momentarily, yeah. or you can check it. It's uh, it's good to be here <laughs> in the in dark corner. Yeah, the uh, the bunker. Yeah, in the bunker, but we're turned sideways. Yeah. I don't have we we've never quite had this angle before. Not for Bible study. Yeah, not for yeah. We did for uh, our last confirmation video. Uh, well, we were slightly facing that way, yeah. but I mean, that's just picking at nits, <laughs> nitpicking, whatever. So, uh, you're, you're doing the, the reality check to see yeah. if we're here. I mean, there's no comments or react. Oh, no, we do have one person watching. Maybe you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to see if I can beat you to this. I can even check to see if the internet's work. Yeah, here we are. We're here. Maybe you. We have sound. There we go. According to my phone. Good. Well, now that, that I'm here and you're here, I'm going to leave. Yvonne. Hey, good Yvonne. morning, Yvonne, down the hall. Yeah, well, still social distancing uh -huh. uh, here. Yeah, I'm going to go fill up my coffee. Okay. I'll be back in a jiffy. Okay. So you just, I'll just do whatever uh, you do. Sit there in silence. I'll just sit, there. meditate. We will Talk meditate. To Today's only meditation on the word. So good morning, Chris. Uh, it's good to, good to have you for uh, as long as you can join us. So. It's good to, good to have you. So we'll wait a few more minutes for more people to join us. Turn to today. We'll be in James one again, uh, verses. I think we're going to start with verse twenty-one today. Let's see. Good morning, Tom. <clears throat> good to have you with us. I'm back. That wasn't too long. Was yeah. I just I just stalled by saying good morning to people. Yeah. Um. Good morning, Amy and Rick. Good morning. Did you say good morning to Tom? I did. I feel like I missed Tom last week. I was oh. I was look. I don't know why. Oh, so anyway, so double good morning. To double Tom. good morning to Tom. We we do have a new piece of hardware, but we're not using it this morning. We have a new computer that we're oh, trying yeah. to, that we're trying that we did use uh, for for live streaming. Eventually, we could switch over to that, mm -hmm. uh, and then this the we the, used it for worship. On Sunday. We did use it for worship on Sunday. Uh, as many have noted, we are still working tirelessly. <laughs> I haven't even slept all week. No, uh, <laughs> trying. I mean, we are working uh, to figure out still the the spoken word. Got some new equipment coming in today. Not promising that'll fix it. Uh, <laughs> some new then, stuff though. Yeah, with the new song service, still questions about how the sounds are coming in off the soundboard, etc. But we'll get that. I think we're getting to the bottom of it. So, good morning, uh, Dick and Susie, Larry and Jay Ann. Let's see. So, I'm going to turn off the timer. Where does the Saint? Where did the Saint John homepage red Facebook Live box go? I don't know. Good question, Peggy. Heidi, Heidi Milky is the one that keeps the web page updated. You can put that in the note of remembering. I don't know where it went, but I zoomed in on the existing tool over here as well. Okay. There we go. It went into the internet, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm going to, well, we can do our, we'll do opening prayer and then I'll go to the, I'll pull the, the uh, Bible, pay the Scripture reading up. I can't even talk. Here. So let me get this set up. Um, let's see. Prayer requests today. Good morning, Tom and Marcia. Good morning, Mom. Uh -huh. I can call everybody Mom, but there's only one person who's yeah. really my mother. So, yeah. My mom I mean, I wouldn't call everybody Mom. That'd be weird to call Tom Mom. Yeah. Yeah. That would be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my mom has started watching. Not, not live, but she watches... Well, good morning to your, well, good whatever time of day to your mom. I hope she watches this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of my mom, uh, she's having a procedure tomorrow, so we can pray for her. Okay. So. Your dad's name is Dorian. Yes. And your mom's name is all of a sudden, it start, doesn't start with a D. No. Uh, K? Uh, Mary. Mary. Okay. It was, uh, yeah, Mary. Okay. I don't know why it was gone yeah. like that. Okay. We'll pray for Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andrea. In the Andrea and the girls are going to pick Oliver up in Effingham, Illinois today. 
with the, the vehicle of the family that took Oliver, <laughs> picked Oliver up on the way and they had a fuel issue and now that's fixed. So we're good. she's taking it from Ray Skillman over here to there. So she's a little anxious in the 15 passenger van that she's got to drive back because <laughs> that was the only vehicle available for rental and a high profile vehicle. Apparently there's some winds expected today. Oh, good. Yeah. So, uh, so pray for your mom, uh, procedure for our, our country, our nation, yeah. our world, our school and little wings. Yes. Still looking for yes. positions for Christy, Scotty and family as she deliberates a call. You had a good visit mm -hmm. with them. You want me to pray or are you going to pray? Uh, you, I'll pray. You okay. Pray. Let us, uh, let us pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are blessed that you have put us into the church, that as your spirit is at work, as we know by faith that we have Jesus, who is our Savior, who is our Good Shepherd, who is our big brother, who laid down his life and took it up again, who reigns, at the right hand of the Father, the Father who created all things out of nothing and uh, in and through Jesus holds them together. You have heard the prayer concerns spoken here between Pastor Luke and me. The, the, the things that are on the hearts and minds of those who gather with us this morning on Facebook. For those who gather with us uh, maybe later today or in, uh, in, in a week, whatever time of day that they may uh, watch this as we gather around your word. Um, we pray specifically for Mary uh, as she will be undergoing a procedure for all those who travel pray for our world, for our country, for our state and nation uh, at a congregational level. We thank you for the ministry that you have entrusted to us here on the southeast side of Indianapolis for 167, 168 years. Um, for all those who have served here, for those who are serving here, for those who, if it be your will, may serve here. And that includes the Scotty family. For those who minister through our Little Wings ministry, we pray that you would provide helpful hands and, and inclined hearts and uh, to, to serve even the youngest among us. And we thank you that we can, can be enriched by your word, as St. James says, the implanted word, the word that comes from outside, that changes us from uh, the inside out. Uh, as you have given us ears to hear and hearts to believe, continue to shape us, to be more like Jesus, to, uh, to love others as we have first been loved, to uh, purify uh, the anger that uh, is within us and within the society around us, uh, that ultimately uh, others will see Jesus in and through us, and that we, at our worst, would see Christ in them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, here we go. James. <laughs> James. Back to James. Uh, you, do you have any, any forecast for today? How much we're gonna, going to cover? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing roughly two verses. Roughly two? Roughly okay. Two. Well, we'll see. Uh, Plus or minus. Um, yeah. no, it's, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I got to get, get all the, the, the stuff up there. This just says, welcome to Wednesday Bible. I guess uh -huh. it could say study, but then it would cut into, anyway, people know what that means. Yep. Uh, we did not, we, we, we got a lot of, I wouldn't say mileage. The, the one verse 20 yeah, we unpacked, well, both 19 and 20, we unpacked them a lot. Yeah. Then we, then we did a pastor chat on Friday. Mm -hmm. Or Friday. Thursday. We released it on Friday. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, Tom and Phyllis. Uh, good morning, Judy and Dick. We released it on Friday, and I, and I was sharing with you, I think one of the, the blessings that I, I found is that those things were very accessible because you and I have spent time in and around that word, and not just us, like we've been even through the, this gift of technology mm -hmm. uh, with the, the people in the Facebook yeah. area uh, yeah. as well. In the screen. Yeah. So I still, it's just stuck with me, like the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. and, and I continue to be convicted by that. I was just to say, you, you haven't been angry since last, last Thursday. <laughs> <have you? laughs> no, I haven't been angry since, uh, since this morning. <laughs> since... Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the anger melts away as soon as I get on here. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, th I think as, as we look at still the broader uh, reality, I guess, in, in which we live, um, 
we are in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. To be of the world, I think, is to be maybe born of anger and malice and wrath. To be uh, of Christ. It's a different be, way. It is a different way. It's the way. It is the way. It's the best way. Yeah. Uh, but it's a hard way. <laughs> yeah, very difficult. So as, as we look at that now and we move into, because I, I don't feel like last week we had as much opportunity to, and not that there's a time frame on this, but I'm pointing, well, they can't see. We have another monitor right here. Well, well you can't see it, but <laughs> there's another monitor right here that has the text that, that you all see on the screen. Uh, verse 21, therefore put away all filthiness and rampant, rampant wickedness and receive the meekness with meekness, the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Um, this is very, I, I, think, I think we touched on this briefly last week. This is very uh, Pauline. Mm -hmm. You're agreeing with me. Why? Just because you don't want to upset me or? Uh, I don't want you to get angry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, Pauline. Uh, Paul. Uh, this no. is not a female Pauline. No, uh, the Apostle Paul. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he often talks about uh, putting away uh, the things of uh, sin. He does go through these vice lists. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking Colossians three, uh, which we did in the we, we read we, on we the did Thursday yeah, chat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Therefore, holy and beloved. Yeah. Yes. Um, so Paul, like that. I mean, Paul is constantly saying, "Put off." these sins, these vices, he usually lists off like seven or eight of them. Sure. Not an exhaustive list by any means, but uh, yeah. Anger. Be because uh, in Paul's letters typically follow a format of this is who you are in Christ. Now be it. Do oh, it. be that. Okay. Do that. And, and so he often goes through like, you once were these things and the sinful vices and all this stuff. You once were all of that. Now you are a, a new creation. God, a new creation. A child of God. Um, now live it. Be it. Do it. Because there's no longer slave or free, barbarian, Scythian, whatever. This is Colossians yeah, 3. Yeah. I was just reading through Romans this morning. Similar stuff mm -hmm. in, in Romans. Also, that'll be a great transition because you said, this is who you are now. Now be it. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen in verse 22 when we get there in four weeks. Mm -hmm. now, uh, <laughs> deep be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because So the other thing I was thinking about with this, you, th that is not what I was thinking about in this game of read my mind. Ah. <laughs> but I like what you did with it. What I was thinking about is this implanted word. Oh, yeah. I was thinking that's Pauline. Mm -hmm. It's scriptural. Mm -hmm. Because the implanted word is not a word that you implant in yourself or I implant in me. Who does the planting? The Spirit. The Spirit, okay, yeah. Or, I mean, I guess you could say even in, in and through the church, mm -hmm. the word is implanted in baptism. The word is fed and nourished. Through proclamation. Through proclamation. Preaching, through Bible study, through, yeah. reading, through reading God's word. Yeah, it, it's, the, uh, it's the word that is, and here's that Latin that, that your buddy, your seminary compatriot, the rapper known as Flame, oh, yes. in his latest album, Extra Nos. Mm -hmm. Extra Nos meaning outs, outside of us. Mm -hmm. The word that comes from the outside. Yeah. Because because Jesus says, look, it's not what's on the outside that defiles you. It's what's on the inside that defiles you. And then he says, uh, so in turn, it's that implanted word that comes in through the ear to the heart that mm -hmm. purifies you and changes you. I'm going to turn off my notifications. Reminder to pay my <laughs> visa bill. So go ahead and pay it. Okay. So from the outside. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, we talk about the word, like who we, not just what is the word, God's word, but who is the word. It's Jesus, the son of God. The word comes to us extra most. The word became flesh and dwelt among. So Advent then come the first coming of the word to us mm -hmm. the second advent is the second well ultimate coming because yeah. he still comes to us though right yeah. he's still with us yeah he still comes to us through i mean all the things we just yeah talk about baptism communion uh reading of the bible studying the bible preaching of the word interaction with other christians so. yeah 
I was listening, and then this, this notion of meekness here, I was just listening to something a couple days ago, and it talked about a definition of meekness, not so much as, uh, let's say, weakness or... A doormat. A doormat, but meekness, the definition I think this person used was you have a sword that you could use, but you sheath it. And maybe that has to do with anger also. Like, and rather than slashing out at the world with your sword, you sheave, sheave. Sheave? Yeah. Seems world. It's like jargon. If you yeah. say jargon, <laughs> jargon, jargon. Yeah. Sheath it. Yeah. Sheath it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's maybe a humility, a proper understanding of yourself and other people. And how to use the, 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 the strength, the faculties that God has given you? Not to destroy, but to build up. Yeah. In love for your neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Latin, this is just a fun tidbit. Okay. And we don't have to spend any time on it, but the word uh, for filthiness, uh, the Greek word used there is what's known as, and this is, I think this is Latin, a hapax legomenon. I know what a hapax legomenon is. What is it? It's a word that only occurs once in that place. Once. Yeah, so this is uh, so the word for filthiness here. This is the only t time that this word is used in the Bible. So, so there you go. Yeah, <laughs> hapax legomenon. Yeah, yeah. What is it again? I wasn't listening to the actual word. I just wanted uh, to say. Oh, I didn't even say uh, rupa ruparia. That's a mouthful. Yeah, it sounds like ruparia, like diarrhea. I, I guess if you want. Well, uh, diarrhea means to flow through. I looked this up a few. I think I, I told you this because there's a word. There's a word called logaria, which means a flow of words, and diarrhea means to flow through. And now you're saying that's rupa ria as a, something. I don't know what rupa is. I, I don't. Okay. Wait, this is this is why there. people are so edified by these Bible studies. Anyway, so uh, I'm sorry uh, I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, the other thing, and maybe we touched on this last week. Also, meekness is the opposite of anger and arrogance. You talk about people getting boldly angry. Uh, glad that Amy's laughing with us. Yeah. Um, and, and I said, so meekness is the virtue, the strength of the lowly. Um, so it's dependence on God and receptivity to his grace. And I think that's also the implanted word which comes, the Holy Spirit makes us vessels that can and do receive this. Is this, is this said rightly? I think so. Makes us able to receive. Um, so God doesn't look and say, oh, there's one who's better than the other. They've earned my grace or implanted word. It's God's grace or implanted word that makes us lovable or worthy to receive. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. So the other note I have is new life starts with the word. And now, um, now it's implanted and it's the continuing power for salvation. Mm -hmm. so, so why then do we gather together in worship because we need this word for strength and uh the, we say that the sacrament for instance the sacrament of the altar is something that gives us strength mm -hmm. strengthens our faith strengthens our faith renews us rick has a question via shirley she wants to know what rampant wickedness means in this context Put all filthiness in rampant wickedness. Well, I didn't. I don't have a note on that. Rick. So you, you have a, we have a note. You have more notes with you. Uh, rampant wickedness. Well, I was, I was not wondering the same thing, but I was wondering about the, the putting off, putting away of filthiness and rampant wickedness. What is, what is that mean? What does that look like? Um, I'm, I'm going to pull up this Greek that'll be hidden over here at least, so I can. Well, these are good questions. We're not prepared. I'm not. I'm not. know that you're. Maybe you might be prepared. I'm yeah. not. Uh, I'm. I'm having trouble making this font bigger. I, my initial thought is, is just kind of a uh, filthiness and rampant wickedness. Just kind of a catch-all phrase to put away all sin, everything that is evil, everything that is not of the Word, that is not of Jesus. Put it out of your life. Uh. Cut it off, yeah. get rid of it, mm -hmm. because because Jesus does talk like that. I mean, if your eye is causing you to sin, gouge it out, gouge yeah. it out, pluck it out. If your hand, it's not he's speaking hyperbolically. 
which then back months ago when we talked about um, verses 13 to 16 about temptation, God doesn't tempt. But if there are things that you know are a particular stumbling block or vulnerability for you, probably not good to keep it in close proximity yeah. or put yourself in close proximity. Yeah. Is it fair that some people can whatever drink drink alcohol and not abuse it? Well, I don't know if it's fair, it's yeah. just, but if that's a stumbling block for you, don't do yeah. it. Yeah. That's wisdom. Yeah, and again, um, this this is James is a kind of proverbial statement, so kind of just a, a catch-all kind of kind of statement. Um, we were talking about earlier that sin ultimately leads to death and rampant, so filthiness, rampant wilkiness, wickedness, uh, these things, that which leads to death, because he's talking about um, uh, the implanted word, which is able to save your souls, kind of contrasting that with filthiness and wickedness, uh, that does not save your soul, it actually destroys your soul, when it destroys you, it destroys your body and soul. Um, I was, I was looking at these, these Greek words, uh, perisain, kakios, and kaka means filth in it, filthiness, bad, bad. which I think, yeah, so we, I think that is kind of understood by some English speakers, kaka, something bad. Um, so it's just an abundance yeah. of filthiness or, or wickedness. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's evil, it's trouble. Yeah. Well, and I think James, he probably teases us out gives us some specific examples throughout his book. You know, he's talking about, uh, well, just one couple verses prior, anger. Uh, you know, anger easily lends itself to excess wickedness. Yes. Um, he's going to talk about watching your tongue, what you say about other people, uh, things like that. So, again, I don't know if, I think James is probably being deliberately uh, broad and ambiguous with just wickedness, all of it. <laughs> Put it all away. Yeah, and, and this is a, I think as we said at the beginning, a general epistle. Mm -hmm. So it's for the church at large. So he may not speak specifically, he may not even know specifically what's happening in Corinth. But he knows the natural condition of man. <laughs> yeah. And he knows the power of the word of God. Yeah. Uh, tying in, and, and Peggy, I think, e echoes, let me get back here. Um, she, I forgot we can do this. She said, oh, I'm going to move this down. Meekness is having power and strength, but holding it in control rather than unleashing it. Yeah, so Jesus is meek. Yeah. Right? He has, he has all things he could do, but he doesn't. Yeah. And that, that's where ultimately um, power or, I guess, authority, because I can't think exactly how Jonathan Fisk says it in Echo. Someone is put into a position of authority for the sake of those underneath them. Mm -hmm. They have power, but they don't use it for their own benefit. They use it for the sake of those underneath them. Yeah. By the same token, they withhold some other, they don't do some of the things they could do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the, the frightening thing about when we look at martial law. Mm -hmm. That is an overt display of power that if not restrained properly, will lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. So we hope that those people who wield that power are meek yeah. in that sense. Yeah. But, but it doesn't mean a doormat. No. Yeah, I think we've often thought of meekness as, we, we've talked about this a little bit, uh, kind of just self-deprecation or I'm such a horrible person. Right. Right? That's being meek. Right. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Kind of, a, a, like, well, you said a weak person. That's me. Well, well no, uh, it's not really what what James is getting at here. We can make a little saying: "Meek is not weak." That doesn't define what it is, <laughs> but at least it's not weak. I, yeah, because I, yeah, it, it's something I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just interesting. I guess we, my sense, and maybe it's just my ignorance. Maybe it's just not something we use a whole lot in our day to day speaking. Yeah. Like when I think of meek, I think of like a little mouse or something. Yeah, yeah. Meek what can a mouse mild. do? Meek and mild. Oh yeah, 
What song is that? Like a Christmas song? I think, yeah. Meek and mild. Meek, baby Jesus, meek and mild. Meek and mild. Yeah. But meek doesn't mean weak. Yeah. It means he's got a lot of potential. Yeah. Energy. This is like, I mean, I, what's coming to mind is a a person who's cool, calm, and collected. Like, um, like the Fonz. <laughs> I think he was a little arrogant. Oh, okay, okay. That's not what we're thinking about. <laughs> MacGyver? Maybe I shouldn't say cool, but like <laughs> someone uh, secure who they are in Christ. Ah, okay. Uh, I don't have to be insecure about anything. Right. Because um, I have the, the strength of Christ in me and behind me and around me. Mm -hmm. I can be calm. Yeah. I've had moments where I felt like that, where I've otherwise <laughs> wanted to lash out. Or the, the rampant wickedness just... Uh, yes, the rampant wickedness around unleashed. and in me uh, is being unleashed. And yeah, so fa fascinating. I hope I hope that's helpful. Anything else you want to say about that? I've, I've probably... Be oh, Clark Kent. As an example of someone who's meek. Yeah, I guess he's unassuming. Mm -hmm. But he could do a lot of things. Yeah. Well... And then it ends with, which is able to save your souls. Mm -hmm. The implanted word. What does that mean, your souls? Do your, does your body not matter? Well, that's I'm going to set this up <laughs> for you. Yeah. Uh, when it says soul, what is it? What do you think? That, is that comprehensive or is that specific only that your soul is the most important thing? No. Uh, it's just kind of a, a, uh, a saying, a way to say it. It's able to save you. Okay. Um, All of you. Yeah. It's not just your soul that is saved. Jesus came in the flesh to save whole being, our whole person, but body and soul. Because if Jesus comes back, it's not our soul that gets resurrected, it's our body. Well, maybe I should say we are resurrected, which includes body and soul. They're put back together. Yes. So, I mean, life in the church is often described, though, as the care of souls. The German term, I've said, is a Seelsorger, a soul healer. Yeah. When we talk about soul, we are also talking about bodies. Yeah. I guess, lest we confuse the body is all that matters, we start by saying soul, but that includes also the body. Well, I yeah. know I, we've talked about this before, but like, if I ask the question to a group of Christians, which is more important, the soul or the body, right. uh, a lot of times Christians will say the soul. And I always, it's set up as kind of a trick question, because the answer You're is, a tricky guy. <laughs> uh, You're meek about that. I, I'm meek, yes. Uh, <laughs> the, it, it's, it's both. Yes. Um, God created us as human creatures, body and soul, yes. which is what's so tragic about death is body and soul are ripped apart from each right. other. So when we say soul or body, the, the two are not mutually exclusive, meaning soul is in juxtaposition to body or opposite yeah. as if they don't coexist. Yeah. They coexist. They are to be a human is to be a body and a soul, a soul with a body body with a soul yeah. and I, uh, James I mean he is he is a Jew and the Jews the Israelites of the Old Testament they didn't really think of body and soul the way that we do because we are influenced by more Greek thinking oh, okay. platonic thinking I know we're getting in the weeds of this uh, that's kind of a hot box legomena <laughs> yeah uh, and, and I many of us in Western culture are influenced by Greek thinking that the soul needs to escape the body yeah Think yeah those kinds that's of what things. Plato said yeah um, but Old Testament Israelites, I'm guessing James, they didn't really think of that separation as like like what tend, what we tend to today. There's a holistic nature. Yeah, yeah they so, have yeah. more of a body and soul just together. Yeah. Uh, Dick Braun asks, at some point, could you discuss the current event? Discuss current events as they relate to Revelation. Yes, we could. <laughs> um, I'm not unwilling. Let's do a little bit of this, and we'll maybe we'll reserve the last few minutes. I, this. Can we do it briefly? I can't. Maybe I could. Yeah. Uh, because I have seen on Facebook yep. many of my yep. Lutheran brothers and sisters who are waiting for the rapture yep. in, a, in a way that is not how we, as uh, how the church historically has confessed what will happen next. Yep. What is happening and what will happen next. Yep. So... Um, in short, yes, we can. So the, we, we, well, this could be, get technical. Um, yeah. 
when we talk about the millennium or a thousand year reign of Christ, it is, there are things that we take literally in the scriptures and there are things that we take symbolically. Revelation is in the genre of apocalyptic literature, which is like dream language. Daniel, a lot of Daniel falls into that category. Um, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, yeah. Um, the thousand year reign of Christ, basically, from what I remember from Ken Klaus's teaching on this, 10 is a number of completeness. If you square it, that's even more complete. So 10 times 10 is 100. You get math too also here. <laughs> 10 cubed, it's just 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. It means the total reign of Christ. So what, what we are amillennialists, meaning not millennialists, not literal thousand year periods, not people who are looking at this dispensation and this dispensation and this dispensation. Which is a period of time. A period of time that we would discreetly be pointing out and counting the days, etc. Jesus, we count that when Christ returns, it won't be a secret. Yeah. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord and that there's not going to be, the, some will be taken and some will be left in a, in a literal sense um, when Christ returns. Like when he returns, that's the end. Mm -hmm. It's not actually the end. It's the end of this age, yeah. the beginning of the new age, which actually started at Easter, yeah. but comes to its fulfillment when yeah. Christ returns. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I think it's an awesome thing that we could spend yeah. months on. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll do that after we get done with James next year. Yeah. Uh, I think every time crazy stuff happens, people, a lot of times Christians will jump to, is this the end? Like, well, maybe we remember 2001, 9 11, people were having the same conversation. Uh, so, two thousand. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, also 1999. Turn of the millennium. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there have been a lot of predictions. Yeah. Prophecies. So, like, not to dismiss anything that's happened, but the stuff that's happening is not new. Like historically, these kinds of things have happened before. Uh, um, and I also think, like, I think for us, it's we need to remember that Revelation is really all about Jesus. Yes. <laughs> it's about Christ. It's not about trying to figure out some mystery to like, oh, we can calculate when Jesus is coming back. It's about Jesus. Yes. The Jesus who loves his church. Well, and so the, the, the danger, I think, um, is that, and there's so many things that begin to overlap. <laughs> and so you look at Revelation and, and some, um, I don't even know if I'm going to use the terms correctly, Christians who are maybe Zionists, who see great significance to the geopolitical state of Israel, yeah. think that, Israel has to be a geopolitical state and maintained as such in order for Christ to return. Yeah. And so then the hope and certainty gets put in external things right. that are not Jesus. Yeah. And, and, and so you're right. It's that simplicity of it's all about Jesus, taking him what he has said, uh, and he is going to come back. And would that it would be today. Yeah. Because then this, yeah, Lord have mercy. all the sad things come untrue. Um, I, I think maybe this this would be maybe this should be another good pastor, pastor chat. chat yeah. yeah, yeah. I was thinking well, the same thing. Set, setting yeah. it up. So yes. we'll we'll come back and we'll put a pin in it yeah. and we'll come back to it. Uh, yeah. Definitely not forgotten. Yeah. But probably need to reel it back in. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of reeling it back in, Mark Yonke says. Cheryl says. How does the implanted word save our souls? And referencing Matthew eleven twenty eight to thirty, where Jesus says, "I am." Uh, gentle in heart. Let me pull it up specifically here. Matthew 11. And I want to make the... Matthew 11, 28. Okay. Is it... Yeah, 20 to 30. So Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor are heavy late and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, uh, you and learn from me. Well, let me... Move this over so you can actually see it. For I am uh, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Talking about the, the rest for your souls? Well, about the implanted word. The question is, how does this tie into the implanted word? 
so we get to do some theology here. Yeah. Uh, G, well, so Jesus is the Logos, the Word. Jesus, who has actually, you talked about this on Sunday with the economic trinity, the, the direction, the divine activity is from God to us, and then Christ carries us back to God. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and you were in Matthew 28 about Jesus came to them. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where I would kind of start. Now, this is, the, so this here, the verb is Jesus saying, come to me. Mm-hmm. Well, he, in, he's talking to people who already have faith. To human beings? Yeah. Okay. Is this law or gospel? <laughs> we went through this yesterday uh, in our circuit. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think yeah, yes. It, yes, it's both, yeah. really. I mean, he's saying to do this, but to the one who is burdened, you get to come to Jesus. I, well, Jesus that's good news to, come. to know that I, I am laboring and heavy laden and I could get some rest in him because I'm exhausted and worn out mm-hmm. and can't take much more of this. Um, yeah, and you will find rest for your souls. Again, this is a, a comprehensive thing. I think this would, this would be another area that would be helpful, mm-hmm. for, I think, for us to unpack in a future thing as well. Jesus says souls. He also cares about bodies. They're not mutually exclusive. Jesus heals people. Well, what I'm thinking about is about a conscience. Because I think every soul, every body, everybody (laughs) has a conscience. Should, unless they're a psychopath, and then there's something else wrong. Uh, When my conscience is burdened, my soul is burdened, and I can get no rest. So here is Jesus who says, here is how consciences should be calibrated. This is what it means to truly be human. Uh, when you're burdened, because this, this burden may not be a physical burden. It may be an emotional burden, a spiritual burden. And you'll find rest. And that rest comes, though, from the one who actually finds you and implants the word. Mm-hmm. But we are still inclined to go away from Jesus, yeah. and then we return to who we are. I, I'm going to get this kind of circular here. It's a great, it's a good question. Yeah. What do you say now that I've talked to uh, you? Well, I'm just thinking, I'm looking at the context of what Jesus is doing. In the section before, Jesus lays down the law pretty hard to the unrepentant villages. Woe to you, Chorazin. Yeah, um, Bethsaida. I mean, all these towns that he visited frequently. Because if those things were done in Tyre and Sidon, yeah, these, they would have repented. These, these pagan yeah. cities. Yeah. So he's calling out a lot of the Jews for rejecting him. Yes. So, I mean, he, it's a harsh word of law that Jesus delivers yeah. here. Oh, I'm convicted and burdened now. Yeah. Um, but then Jesus, I got gospel for you. If those who believe, I have gospel for oh, you. Oh, so at that point, maybe they're poor in spirit. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, I'm in trouble. That's actually me. Mm-hmm. I'm burdened by my guilt. Mm-hmm. My soul is filthy. Yeah. Rampant with wickedness. Yes. The world around me is filthy. Mm-hmm. Is there any hope? Yes. Who can deliver me from this? The word. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Log us. So, and it is that, <laughs> and I think we're, why this, the, the importance of saying something's Pauline, and usually I think we make this extension because Luther says that he, he, essentially he, what he pounded on St. Paul or something. But he, he, he wanted to know what it means that the righteous shall live by faith because he didn't understand this. Yeah. And he says he beat upon him or something. He, like he wrestled with the Pauline mm-hmm. portion of the scriptures. And, and so then the certainty of faith comes not from what's within you because you have put it there, but what God has put into you because it's outside of you. And so why can I find rest? Well, again, because Christ has first found me. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, the move that I always want to go back to as a, as a Lutheran pastor, theologian, etc. It's, it's all about Jesus? Well, because in this sense, so here's this cliche saying, if it's up to be, I mean, if it's, if it's to be, it's up to me. Mm. Not so with the gospel. No. <laughs> If I am to be saved, it's not because I've done anything. Yeah, can't do anything. But it doesn't mean I shouldn't do anything, which is where we're going to be here. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. So I don't know if that's a great answer, but it is what it is. So we, let's get into this James one twenty two. Yeah, yeah. All right, read it for us, brother. Uh, James twenty two. I mean, this is really what this is a this is a twenty two to twenty five is really the section I have. Okay. Well, I'll just go ahead and read all of that, and we'll. Okay, we'll go for it. All right. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Okay, well, um, let me move this back. I've got, where's my, how's my mouth here? Okay. So the Lutheran in me, maybe the misplaced Lutheran in me, doesn't like this. Why not? What's your problem? <laughs> uh, doers of the word. Um, I'm not supposed to do anything. He will be blessed. The one who does what he hears will be blessed in his doing. Um, <laughs> The law of liberty. What is, oh man, all this, all this stuff that's causing me trouble. Now you got an emoji, a, a weird emoji from something. It's not a weird emoji. Where, where I lost the thing again. Let me come back. Someone reacted with an emoji. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember what that emoji means. But anyway, surprise emoji. I think it's surprise. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Emojis are tough. Yeah. So you don't like it. Yeah. Should we just get rid of it? Probably. <laughs> we can't. No. Still God's word. And again, well, and, and this, because we started, when we first started talking about James, we kind of talked about how Luther didn't like this uh, epistle, really, um, but it, it grew on him. Um, and Lutherans, I think, have had a history of not liking the book of James, uh, which uh, is unfortunate uh, and misplaced, I think. Um, but at the same time, this is this is very Pauline. Because Lutherans, we love Paul. This is also very Pauline. Because uh, James is talking to people who already believe in God, believe in Jesus. And now he's saying, this is who you are. Now do it. Be it. Live it. Be the children of God. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking through this. I love simplicity. And yet... Broadly, we all, I think, have a tendency to over simplicity, overly simplistic mm -hmm. thinking. Yeah. And what happens, I think, is we get this false dichotomy set up that says, if it's all about faith and what God has done for me, then it has nothing to do with me doing anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or if, if it, it must have everything to do with me and nothing to do with God. Yeah. Well, how about both are true okay. and are held in tension? Yeah. When in doubt, though, the certainty of salvation is not going to come from what you are doing. It's what Christ has done for you, mm -hmm. which is then, and we had talked about this yesterday because in our circuit meeting, which we had a pause on it, circuit meeting is where area pastors meet together. We started going through Walther's law and gospel, and we have this Lutheran distinctive, this Lutheran distinctive of law and gospel. And in short, the law says, do this, and it's never done. The gospel says, believe this, it's already been done for you. Mm -hmm. They can be helpful distinctions, but there's a place where they become, I would argue, unhelpful. Yeah. Because we, and, and the person, a pastor who had put this Bible study together, someone 20 years ago, approximately, and, and some of you maybe did this. You did this maybe in your confirmation class or Bible class, and you'd see a verse of scripture and you'd say, well, is this law or gospel? And sometimes it's pretty clear. And, it, and it's not, I mean, some people say, well, oh, I thought the Old Testament's law and the New Testament's gospel were false because there's certainly gospel yeah. in the Old Testament about God's promises and what he's done. But uh, there are other passages that are not so clear and really depending on the way that it's conveyed and received. And we can't, we don't always know how the Holy Spirit's going to mm -hmm. act on someone. We, it's, th those are not helpful distinctions always. So what I think, what I suggest, and I think we have, I hope people landed on, is we're just supposed to preach the word. Yeah. Well, and, and it is a helpful tool. Uh, law and gospel is a helpful tool, a helpful framework, uh, and especially in pastoral care. Yes. Um, 
Like Do you it, want to give an example of that? Oh, I'm just thinking if, if somebody is really struggling with a specific sin, like, oh, I did it again. Oh, it's like pastor, or, or not even just to a pastor, to a fellow Christian. Like, ah, oh, just whatever. Like, just beating themselves up for it. And then you say, you're darn right you did. Yeah. What are you doing? No you're, you're still doing this? Like, Spock. what's wrong? Yeah. Like, don't right. you know that God says don't do this? Uh, yeah. That is not what that person probably needs at that yeah. point. Uh, hitting them with the law, probably not appropriate at that time. They need, like, yeah, you did this. Jesus still loves you. Jesus forgives you. You can comfort the afflicted. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, if you got a, a person who is blatantly doing something wrong and has justified care, themselves, justified in their, themselves, or doesn't whatever. care, whatever, yeah. uh, you shouldn't tell them. It's not appropriate to tell. Jesus them loves you anyway, even yeah. though you're Jesus, a Jesus forgives you. Like, unrepentant. Yeah. No. Goofball. <laughs> it's like no. You need to knock this off. This is not becoming of a Christian to right. do this. This is not what a child of God looks, talks, sounds. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, so the word of God is always going to do something. Yeah. The word of God does not change. Mm-hmm. We are constantly changing. So it, it is always going to do something. It may convict, it may kill, it may soften hearts, it may, it gives new life. Encourage. Comfort. Encourage. Um, so, so, that, so here's that connection, and we don't want to divorce the two and set them against one another. Yeah, because I think that's the danger with, with the framework of law gospel, especially for Lutherans in our Lutheran history. We have set the two against each other, and we have, like, law bad, yeah, so I was just gospel say. good. Yeah, law bad, gospel good. That's all I need to know. No. Uh, and then we preach it that way sometimes. We, we do, like, you know, we'll, we'll hit the law, and like, oh, look how bad you are. Oh, look. Here's the gospel. You don't actually need to change anything in your life. Right. Um, <clears throat> that, that's, that's misusing the framework. Well, and then the structure of that sermon would be the first part, and it may not be half, it could be 87%, yeah. makes you feel bad. Yeah. But you just say, I don't really need to listen to that part because I know at the end he's going to say, but it's okay because <laughs> Jesus died for you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not, th- then you can, do, you can do anything, you can do that with every text. Yeah. In some sense, yeah. But then you got to do weird stuff with it too. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. The law existed before sin. God told Adam and Eve, yeah, what to do, how to live, take care of the garden, be uh, stewards of this creation, be fruitful and, uh, and multiply. God gave them the law: don't eat of this tree. The law of God is actually good. There was no need for the gospel because there was no sin. Right. So it was just law, and it was good. When Jesus comes back, we won't have need of the gospel anymore. Like it will be just God's law. Like we will be living out God's law perfectly. Because um, remember, I feel like you're probably upsetting people. <laughs> I'm upsetting myself. You're breaking it. Okay. Uh, because I mean, we we've talked about this. The law of God is actually good for us. It's good and wise. The Ten Commandments are actually good for us. When These we, are the holy Ten Commands God gave to us by Moses' hands when high on Sinai's mount he stood, receiving them for our good. Yes, Luther said yeah. in German, and somebody translated it to English. In general, when we live according to God's law to the Ten Commandments, it actually is generally better for us. Is it generally? It, I would I would say I think you could well, say absolutely it is. It better. is better. I I, I want to say that it doesn't mean your life's going to go perfect because we still live in a fallen world, uh, but it is better for you. Yes. It's never not good to follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. God's law. Yes. Is it easy? No. No. But it's good for you. Yeah. And it's good for the people around it, it's, you. It's it's really good for the people. Well, around and, and look. So so right now. Here's, here's, here's another thing. It is better for you and me when other people follow God's law, whether they even know it or not, yeah. because I don't think that rioting and looting satisfies the, a hungry heart or gives peace or mm-hmm. makes me feel good, yeah. makes me feel ill at ease. Yeah. So it is better for me when other people follow God's law. It's better for other people when I follow God's law. Yeah. Would you say it's probably better for your family when you... God's Absolutely, life. yes. Amen. Yeah. Yes. I mean, go down the list. I mean, I, I don't, I don't even yeah, yeah. need to enumerate all the yeah. lists. Yeah. So it is just always better. But the old Adam hates to be told what to do. I was just telling you that before we started. <laughs> yeah. I said, I don't like people telling me what to do. Yeah. And I'm starting to realize that. I, well, it depends who they are. Yeah. My mom tells me, well, it depends on my relationship with them to some extent. Yeah. Anyway, I don't need yeah. to psychologize myself here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so anyway, it, it, so Rick said, 
minutes back. Um, Though we receive God's love, strength, blessing passively, doesn't that love, that strength, that blessing empower us to do, to act? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, so the Holy Spirit does this. Mm -hmm. If you're a new creation, now live it out. Yeah. I mean, that's what James is talking about in the verses I just read. Be doers of the word. Yes. Implant it in you. Yes. Through the work of the Spirit. Now do it. Admittedly, now, we, this is an area of vulnerability for us as Lutheran Christians because we say, I do not want to think that I contributed in any way to my salvation. So I really shouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a slippery slope. Yeah. Because then it just says, I can excuse all manner of sin because I'm not supposed to really do anything. Mm -hmm. Not true. Yeah. Be who God's created you to be. Because I I think you go down that road, like, what do you do with, like, most of what Jesus said, most of what Paul said, most of what James said? Like, they're telling us how to live the Christian life, which is law, like. Yes. You got you you can't you can't you can't kill, you can't commit adultery, you can't steal. I mean all these things. You gotta love your neighbor, you gotta take care of it, you gotta give your, your cloak to your neighbor. I mean all these specific instructions on in how to, to live the Christian life. Um, to love your enemy. To to love that person that slaps you across the face. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this it's just uh Again, the wonderful aspect that we have in the church. And so this is where, look, I mean, I'll get, I'll get deeply personal with some of this stuff. Um, so I struggle with it. Like, I would, if, if, if someone regularly chooses, during a pandemic we have exceptions, right? Yeah. But to regularly say, I will not go to church, I, I, I don't have to go to church uh, because Jesus loves me, I'll never, I don't have to go to church. Mm-hmm. And to not partake in the gifts that God gives, that's still a good thing for us. Mm-hmm. You should still come to church. Yeah. And I think we, then we get into like motivation. Well, I, I wouldn't want somebody to go to church because I told them to go to church. I want them to go to church because they just want to go. Well, look, the old Adam doesn't want to do anything. And yeah. if I take that approach with my kids, yeah. if people take that approach with me, like there are times we just need, this is what you're supposed to do. Well, and that's what in verse 22, be, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We're really good at deceiving ourselves. Like, yeah. using your example. I don't need to go to church because my relationship with Jesus is fine. I don't, I don't need to go to it church. It may be better than fine. In fact, you know what? I would tell you my relationship with Jesus has gotten even stronger since I stopped going to church. Uh, I would say, according to God's word, you are deceiving yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I mean, but it's like, so we clothe these things in piety and light to to justify ourselves yeah and and you can do it with anything with it. Well, i mean last week we talked about anger righteous right. anger really i have a special just, kind of anger that is allowed we are really deceiving ourselves yes. um, the reason it is okay for me to steal my labor's internet is because he's paying for it anyway i mean he doesn't use all the bandwidth yeah he he, he in fact it's really a, it's an injustice that comcast would charge my neighbor for the level of service he has, because he doesn't even know how to use his internet, I'm actually helping him out and making the world more just by stealing his internet. You're deceiving yourself. It's a victimless crime. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could yeah. go down the line. Yeah, yeah. Who's being hurt? Well, yeah. look, you, 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 your conscience okay with that? You, like you, so we could do it with anything. It's a twisted fun game yeah. that, that we could do. So uh, Rick says, I cannot contribute to my own salvation, but I can live out my salvation in obedience to his word, serving my brothers and sisters. Yes. Be who God has created you to be. Yes. Because, okay, so this is where Luther says, a Christian is perfectly free, Lord of all, subject to none, right? You are completely free. In Christ, you you have liberty in Christ. And then he turns around and says, the antithesis, it would seem, on the other hand, it's a Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject of all, uh, uh, subject of all, it should say slave, I didn't copy the quote correctly, but it's like subject of all, slave to all, or something. Because I wrote subject, subject twice. Basically, Luther is saying, because Christ has freed us from our sin, um, we, are, we are free. We are incredibly free. But because of that, we actually enslave ourselves to our neighbor. Stop toiling away to earn your salvation. Use the, the gift of time that God has given you 
to be who he's created you to be. Which is played out in love and service to your neighbor. Which is done putting, in and through your body. Putting their needs above your own. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, we've been wrestling through very specific examples of this during the pandemic. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. You know, they're, yeah, they're this is been wearing masks. And, I mean, all this stuff, like, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't like it, but maybe for the sake of my neighbor, I don't want to be a stumbling block for my neighbor. I'll put on, I'll put on a mask. Think, things like that. From a pastoral perspective, I mean, that's been lived out in real time because I mean, we know we can't please all the people all the time. I individually would love to please all the people all the time. And this pandemic has brought out some new struggles and crosses for people to bear. And sometimes it's been surprising the people that have struggled. Uh, and it's like, well, look, I, I'm pretty sure no matter what we do, maybe nobody's going to be completely satisfied based on certain externals. Anyway, uh, we, we have a lot to do here. We'll have to come back to this next week, yeah. if, unless Jesus comes back first, and then we won't have to. Uh, well, so I, the other thing I have here, so a parallel, the, the book that I was reading says there's a parallel to Matthew 7, 24 to 27, which is well known because most people probably know that, not most, but many probably know the, 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 like the camp song. The wise man built his uh, house upon the rock, rock. right? The wise man who builds his house upon the rock and it stands and the rains come and the storms and things, but it doesn't fall. Mm -hmm. But the, the foolish man builds his house, builds his house on the sand and, and it falls. Land. Yeah. And great was the fall of it. So th this, um, the, the foolishness of, um, and, and again, it's such a tangible thing about verse 20, he, the person who looks at himself in the mirror well, where is that? i got to go back here. A person who is a hearer of the word and not a doer is like a man who looks at t intently at his natural face in a mirror. He stares at it. And then he walks away. And apparently, it's completely gone. He has no <laughs> yeah. recollection, yeah. no meaning. Well, and it's, it's absurd <laughs> uh, to, to stare at yourself intently in the mirror and then immediately forget. Like, that, that's absurd. Uh, James's point is, you are a Christian, you, you are hearing God's word, but then don't live it out. That's absurd. And this then, I think, is the heartbreaking, aching aspect of dementia, yeah. Alzheimer's, memory loss, the, the, addiction. The, the addiction that this is gone. Mm -hmm. So... There, and I think this is where we'll have some more time next week. So in, in the book that I was reading, it says there was a Greek use of a mirror in moral instruction. Now, this gets played out. And, and so think about the, I, there, there are There's kind of a classical educational model, which has to do with rhetoric and logic and the other stuff. The that Rick Reed knows. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> so, uh, but... But, but we, we actually understand this. So, so think about it. So there's a, a, Helen, there's a Greek use of, of a mirror in moral instruction. We'll think about this from in a dance studio. Think about oh. this in a gym. So you want, you're trying to learn a new thing, and you can look at the instructor maybe in the mirror, and you're in the mirror, and you see, does the form that I'm doing conform? Is it consistent to the right way to do it. Yeah, you can see, oh, oh my arm's not in the right spot. I got to move my arm. Back. Without a mirror, maybe, maybe to me it feels great. And yeah. then I see it in the mirror and I'm like, oh. and then some people are like, oh, I don't want to look in the mirror anymore. I'll just keep doing it the way I'm going to do it, mm. even though it's wrong. Which is harmful. <laughs> Which is harmful and it's yeah. a denial of reality. It's a deceitfulness. So, but also think about this. What are the, th what are the uses of the law? The three uses? The three uses of the law. Curb. Uh, Mirror. A mirror, ding, ding, guy, ding. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, we already, we actually already think in this way. I think, I think we think in this way um, <laughs> that we. Uh, I have to do this so that I want to get ready. This is a big. Set. I'm so. Oh wait, no. <laughs> if we lose all our sound. Okay. So I, I was slow on that. I forget. That doesn't always come up automatically. Probably because it's a temptation. Um, so we, we talk in this way. Like the, mirror, the law is a curb. It keeps me from going into the ditch. Um, 
the law is a mirror because, oh, this is what God expects, and then I look at my life according to it. Yeah. We do this when we confess our sins. Mm -hmm. How should I? Um, how, does, how do we receive the sacrament worthily? We examine ourselves. We examine ourselves in light of what? In light of what the world tells you and the secular priests and orthodoxy tell you? In light of the Ten Commandments. Well, you could in, do it in light of what the secular orthodoxy tells you. Yeah. Did I do my proper virtue signaling today? Yeah. Did I change my Facebook thing, yeah. Im, Im, whatever image, to be consistent with what yeah. Jeff Bezos told me at Amazon Prime and what? Yeah. Anyway, I yeah. go down that road. So, um, the mirror then, but it doesn't feel good to look in the mirror. And so some people say, they look in the mirror and they're all disfigured and they say, well, actually, I look great. Mm -hmm. Or they look in the mirror and they say, I see a man, but maybe they're a woman. I mean, you go down the line. Yeah. I look whatever, in the mirror whatever it is. and I see a horse, <laughs> but I, but really they're seeing a human being. So, fascinating. Yeah. So, um, so then this author says, only the one who practices the law truly attends to it. But if you know what it is and you're conscientious about it, now, here's the challenge. I think the more you practice the law and attend to it, the more sensitive and burdened you potentially might become, and there will still be a temptation to deceive yourself further down the line in a different way mm -hmm. by saying, you know, I'm doing really well compared to other people because I look in my mirror and they're pretty jacked up, but I'm good. I'm better. It's like the, Pharise the, the, the parable Jesus said of the, the Pharisee, Oh, God, I thank you. I am not like that tax collector. Over yes, there. yes. Um, or you say, this is really hard. I'm worn out, and I'm tired of doing it. It's all a sham. Mm -hmm. right. So it, it's, that's always going to be there. We always need Jesus. Yeah. So we, we can pick up next week at 25, I think. Uh, I, I, know, I know we can. We're driving this. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thanks for bearing with us on this uh, on this edition of the Epistle of James. Yeah. We should probably wrap it up. What, you, will you pray for us? Oh, I prayed that's, first. That's, yeah, yeah. that's the right. law of prayer. <laughs> uh, let us pray. Uh, dear Lord God, I, we thank you for uh, the word that you have implanted in each of us, uh, the gift of uh, salvation. Uh, thank you for this time where we get to dive into the book of James and to uh, unpack it a bit. Uh, we ask that you help us to, uh, to live out um, the faith, the word that you have implanted uh, in us, that we would be doers of the word, not hearers only, that we would not deceive ourselves, but we would uh, do uh, and be who and what you have called us to be, uh, children of our Heavenly Father. Help us to look to Jesus in all things, and thank you for the many good gifts that you continue to give us. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Have a good day. See ya. Oh, I forgot to do this. Now we can properly ah. sign off. <laughs> now we got a full thing.